Welcome to the Board of Supervisors regular meeting. We will call the meeting to order. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. I am Julie Hermes, a Respect Life advocate and lobbyist. Today we are here to present a trailer clip of the documentary, The Guardians. The Guardians is a revealing investigative documentary that exposes allegation of corruption within the guardianship, conservatorship, and family court systems involving the legal kidnapping of elderly people. The film shines a light on the lucrative business that drains seniors' life savings and robs them of their freedoms. The film exposes the scope of the systemic abuse of some of our most vulnerable members of society. As our aging population is about to record the largest transfer of wealth in history, we must protect them and their families from those who are using the broken court system to take advantage. For 40 years, nothing and no one has stood in their way until now. Until now, we the people of California, we the people of the United States of America, seek freedom, justice, and liberty for all citizens. Thank you, and um, please play now. If you are considering retiring here, and you're an elderly, wealthy person, think twice. I spoke to my mom on Thursday, and she was fine. I called her on Friday, and there was nobody picking up. Somebody took my parent. It's not supposed to happen in America. I was fighting them back and he was fighting me. They grabbed me and they kept telling me, you'll love it there. And I asked them where I was. You're on the sixth floor in the psych ward. People go in, corpses come out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and appoint your guardian today. A guardian is appointed through the courts to have authority over someone's life. You turn over immediately your bank account, checking account, savings account. They're using senior citizens as the key to the money. We have nothing left. There are relationships between the doctors, the lawyers, the private guardian industry, and the court. My aunt was victimized based on an incorrect diagnosis by an unqualified person. They were trying to convince us nothing to see here I mean, and that raises red flags for any investigative journalist we've got to keep the light shining on the people that are being taken i cannot do this i cannot let these people get away with everything it needs a master investigation thank you we request the board of supervisors to join the northern california board of supervisors to present a screening to their staff to all government agencies, to law enforcement, and to the public for awareness and reform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Genesis Hopkins, followed Hello. by Ruby Edwards. My name is Genesis Hopkins. Please play the third trailer. And is it possible to raise the volume? The volume is really low on the video. Is it possible to raise it a little? It's a small little town, and they all know what's going on. This is corruption at so many levels. There's more to this than meets the eye. It needs a master, and I mean a master investigation. They don't play fair at all. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to fight. I want people to know it can happen to you. Something was wrong, and my gut told me somebody took my parents. I don't know who it is, but somebody took my parents. I mean, how do you react when you've been told that in Las Vegas, the elderly are being systematically and fraudulently declared as incompetent and forced into guardianship? All of a sudden, and without warning, their lives, their finances, and their health care are being controlled by a private guardian appointed by the family court that's supposed to protect them. Just like that. My whole life was shattered. It's been on record that it's $47 trillion are about to change hands from the elderly to their children. When somebody is given guardianship of you by the court, in essence, they become that person. And then have access to all of their bank accounts, all of their retirement funds. Stocks, bonds, will, everything. Instead of wealth passing down through the generations of families, we're seeing wealth passed down through the guardians. Someone could knock on my door, take me away, 
and walk off with everything that I own. They took my house, they took my car, they took $41,000 out of my bank account. They stole everything. Everything was empty. My mom is not dead. They were auctioning off her clothes. That is so scary. It's an absolute conspiracy. This is a perfect example of what a conspiracy is because one or two people could not do this on their own. This is racketeering. This is a multi-million dollar business in which everyone's getting a piece of it. Lawyers, private guardians, home health agencies. I fought with her. I said, I'm not going. I'm not, I started crying. I said, I'm not going anywhere. Who are you? I literally was kidnapped from my own home, drugged before I got to a hospital, asked them where I was, and they said, you're on the sixth floor in the psych ward. They hold me like criminal. This is truth that's stranger than fiction. How is this happening? We have authorities, we have government that is supposed to protect us, but yet it's the government that's participating in the harm that's being done. As soon as my mother became a ward of the state, all her health issues started up. It's the end. All right, thank you. Ruby Edwards. Tape. She would like you to continue playing the next oh, okay, piece great. of the tape. Thank you. Industry of slow death. I can't explain how they do it because it's illegal, but they do it. Don't you know this is the United States of America, that people have their civil and constitutional rights? And you guys fucking killed my mother. And I could think to myself, well, if that was my story, which it isn't, how would I react? Would I be able to control my temper? I think I'd be in prison right now that it had happened to my parents. You touch my mother and you move her, I'm going to take the bat and I'm going to beat the hell out of you got to keep the light shining on the people that are being taken. People go in, corpses come out. I was hoping so much of her to come home. Everything they've been doing for the last 30 years is about to be exposed. It must be stopped. It must be revealed. And it must be revealed today. The perpetrators are starting to be cornered, and they're starting to act strange. It's scarier and scarier what's yeah, going on. Yeah. we got to fix it. We're going to get this mess cleaned up. Reveal, reveal this. Good morning, I am Monica Mukai and I've come before the board many times in regards to my nephew Ryan Morris, who is a 20, almost 60 year old gentleman. He's an identical twin brother of the twin that my mother raised in our family along with his older sisters and all of us family together. As, uh, as, I, as you know, we have worked very diligently since 2015 to have Ryan removed from the, um, um, the clutches of Michelle Morris, who is under investigation, uh, the adopted mother who um, uh, has the death of the 16-year-old uh, girl and other uh, elder abuse, or excuse me, uh, uh, dependent adult abuse claims uh, with the Adult Protective Services Agency. Uh, we also worked very diligently, spent a lot of time, energy, and money to have Sean Spicer removed, which Judge Sunshine Sykes did this May 16th or May 17th, 2019, and which we had supported the Public Guardian's Office to be appointed as temporary. Our goal, obviously, is to bring Ryan home to his biological uh, family with his identical twin brother, his older sisters, and extended family members so that he can live the most least, least restrictive uh, life possible uh, with the most freedom possible. And at the time that we supported the public guardian's office to be the temporary conservator, we had no idea that the deputy conservator who they were going to appoint as Ryan's uh, uh, guardian to decide his best interest actually worked for the adversarial Brown, White, and Osborne's office, who is the law firm who has been working diligently to keep Ryan in the abusive situation and in the abusive household. We are appalled to learn at last week's hearing with Judge Sunshine Sykes, where finally, after almost six months of Ryan's transition from the abusive household into conservatorship with the Public Guardian's office, that this conservator, deputy conservator, is working for the adversarial party who 
has appealed the decision of this honorable Judge Sykes and is asking again to put Ryan right back in the abusive household with the abusive husband. I am very concerned and ask that this board, who is responsible for the county agencies, unlike Priamos, has continually continually deflected this issue to the uh, judge, I am asking again that, uh, that the deputy conservator and Stacy Kiefer with the county council please honor Ryan's respect and humanity and act in his best interest rather than in collusion with Brown, White, and Osborne. I am asking that Gregory Priamos, please, that you answer the question while we know that it would be a moral and ethical responsibility for Stacy Kiefer or Brown, White, and Osborne, the county affirmed, to disclose this conflict of interest, is it a legal responsibility? Please answer. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Edith Rogers. I'm aware you asked a question, ma'am, but that's not how it works without it being agendized. You know that. We've shared that over and over. Saddened by the non-action of the board members, the district attorney's office, and the county council regarding the theft of our family's property from the probate proceedings um, without our family's knowledge. Of course, Ms. Micaiah had no clue of the conspiracy that goes on between our judges, attorneys, and county agencies, as you can see in the clip of the guardians. The county um, tax assessors and the judges and attorneys all networked to subdivide out portions of our parcels that were in probate in this superior court. Without our knowledge, I was the administrator at the time. Also, the county, the judges, and attorneys were working with, um, previous, with the previous administrator who was removed for stealing property out of the estate um, during the same time that Judge William, William Sullivan had to step down. This is racketeering at its best. Um, and none the least, it's real estate fraud with the knowledge of everyone present. The Racketeer Influence and, Corruption and Corrupt Organization Act, commonly referred to as the RICO Act, or simply RICO, is a United States federal law that provides for extended criminal penalties and a civil cause of action for acts performed as part of an ongoing criminal organization. This organized crime includes and is not limited to the San Bernardino and Riverside counties, each county's probate court system, members of the grand jury, judges, attorneys, and even organizations just like CARE, which is ran by Melody Scott outside of um, Redlands, California, which is located at 25 East um, Redlands Boulevard. At some point, you all have to step up to the plate. I understand that Mr. Primos wants to send us to the outside agencies, but I'm asking you, you have the right and the authority when you see um, organized crime, white collar crime, or any kind of crime going on in your county to step up to the plate and clean it up yourselves. We shouldn't always have to have somebody outside to come and help us do what's right for our own citizens. So I'm asking you all, please, let's all come to the table to do things and make um, corrections within our own system to benefit us all. Because we can argue about what part of our um, culture it's going to affect the most, but it affects us all here because it affects our family and our loved ones. Amen. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you again. Okay. Yes, Mr. Primos, we are asking, is it a conflict of interest when Brown, White, and Osborne has an employee that's working on this case and with them on this case of Ms. Mercado? Is it a conflict of interest for her to now be working for the public guardian's office to be the conservator as well? That is a conflict of interest. It should have been disclosed to the family. All right. Thank you very much. If he, if he wants to answer, he's welcome to, but it's not an agendized item. If we engage in a debate. There's a legal responsibility for it to be disclosed. That's all I'm asking. It's up to you. If it's a, I'm okay if you want to respond. I, I'm not going to put you on the spot of telling you to violate the Brown Act. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, and I'm happy to make a brief comment in response to the public comment. Uh, first, the video that was shown pertains to the private guardian system in Nevada, so I think that's important to understand and have a context for that. Um, there is no conspiracy between the county agencies and the probate court judges. Uh, that is a meritless and um, and inappropriate allegation. There is absolutely no factual basis for that at all. And any reference to the probate court and the issues that may have occurred uh, many years ago um, has no application here. Um, also, um, the deputy public guardian that was assigned to the case has never requested that Ryan go back into the Spicer home. And it is important to note that um, Vanessa Espinosa, the deputy public guardian, um, has been uh, reassigned and there'll be a new deputy public guardian assigned to the case. And just lastly, to deal with the, the question, is that there is no conflict of interest. Brown, White, and Osborne is a court-appointed lawyer. They represent the conservatee. And the deputy public guardian is, uh, has been uh, appointed by the court uh, to take care of and to be responsible for the conservatee on a temporary basis. And uh, the public guardian's office uh, does not work for, nor is there any conspiracy with Brown, White, and Osborne. Thank you. That's a, an attorney's short version, so you can imagine a long version might be. So thank you very much. All right, thank you.